The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily represent those of Access Fort Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting group. Access Fort Wayne is a department of the Allen County Public Library. If you or anyone you know might be interested in making a television show, please call 260-421-1250. Hi, welcome to our show with Dr. Rudy Cashman. I have a guest here with me tonight, very interesting, a specialist in family practice and obesity certified, uh, Dr. Malta Ahmed. And uh, tell us a little bit about uh, what type of work you're doing right now. It's, to me, it's very interesting. I actually run a family medicine office mainly for Activate Healthcare. It's a clinic for financed by the large employer. Mm -hmm. uh, we usually take care of the patient, all the family medicine problems, as well as help them lose weight and get healthy. Oh, th thank you uh, very much. I thought his employer is so lucky because you have one person in charge of the health care of all the employees. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you can screen it. Mm -hmm. And you s he is so orientated towards wellness and prevention. Mm -hmm. uh, I myself would bet you're saving your employer a lot of money. Um, and, and that's almost worth studying. Uh, you're a, a wonder, and I thank you for attending mm -hmm. uh, this show. Today, uh, this is going to be very interesting uh, because you do hear a lot about it, uh, and that is the effects of gluten in our health. Uh, and uh, we'll speak about the testing for it, uh, for example. Uh, the gluten story really is what, what this is uh, 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 all about. What is gluten? Gluten is a protein. It's, it's a, uh, a number of proteins that are found mainly in wheat, rye, barley, triticum, comet, and, and, uh, and some is found in oats. Oats themselves don't have any gluten in them, but it's so contaminated in the manufacturing process that uh, if you are gluten, uh, uh, have a gluten disease, uh, then they don't recommend that you eat oats. And, uh, uh, and uh, what's, bad, what's bad about uh, gluten, uh, the, the uh, uh, protein? And, uh, and uh, before we go through that, let's say what foods, uh, what are some of the foods that have gluten in them? Uh, bagels, beer, bread, cookies, cakes, pasta, pizzas, pretzels. So you see uh, it, it is uh, very uh, common. Uh, and, and what it is through history, you know, we've had agriculture maybe 13, 15,000 uh, years, uh, and we have not been eating foods that have gluten in them, uh, except in recent years. If you go way back in, in, in Egyptian times and uh, in Greek times uh, a few thousand years ago, in, indeed, uh, there were uh, s some uh, 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 vegetables that had gluten in them, they, they f uh, found them uh, uh, in the pyramids, uh, for example. Uh, and there was an Indian doctor who, who, who de described it uh, years ago, but we didn't eat much of us, it didn't affect us. And, they, and the genetic structure of gluten was different then. It was called einkorn, which had maybe mm -hmm. tw uh, tw uh, 12 uh, genes in it, mm -hmm. and then it went into Emma, and then into Triticum. It has changed. And what's very interesting, uh, the, a Dr. Burlow from Minnesota, mm -hmm. uh, with the Rockefeller Institute around 1949, uh, perhaps, they, they did the research in Mexico, because they have two seasons there. Uh, and uh, weight used to be uh, 12 feet high or so, uh, and and he they genetically changed and hybridized it, 
and and Dr. Barrowell was able to turn it into a two foot plant. Mm -hmm. It was now it was very straight instead of falling over from the fruits twelve foot high, and uh, it, it, and it grew. The yield went up, uh, and it spread across the whole world. They thought that they had solved uh, a man's problems uh, for food. Yep. Oh yeah, it, the Chinese adopted it, and 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 it. it Tremendous amount for, more for people to eat, but the darn trouble was they never checked it in 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 humans mm -hmm. for any period of time that it might affect you in some manner. And, and what and what they found out now is that the gluten, the protein, and many you know there's gliadin and gliadin and different types of uh, proteins in it, but it's the gliadin uh, that's main, mainly the problem uh, is. Uh, that affects the villi of your gut, those little outpouchings that are in your gut. And the reason you have these villi set like upside down you is that it increases the absorptive capacity of your gut. It turns it into two tennis courts. <laughs> so, yeah. And, and the, the protein uh, in this food uh, as destroys uh, part of the mucosa of your gut. So now, uh, some of the foods uh, that you eat, uh, there are holes in your gut, and they get into your bloodstream, in your body, your Army, Navy, and Air Force decide, boy, that's a foreign substance. Uh, we don't want that in our body. And you have an anti-body reaction to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that, ca that causes a tremendous number of illnesses. I mean, w what are they? The main one is celiac disease, and and and, and in the old days, pure celiac disease, the, the patient children especially would waste to nothing, lose a lot of weight. They get diarrhea. They get a lot of fat in their stool. They look on the stool, and and, uh, and it would be yellow and smelly, and, and it would float. Mm -hmm. Fat floats, mm -hmm. uh, and that was called celiac uh, <coughs> disease. Uh, the severe ones uh, were diagnosed, with the, and they were, you know, thin and, and wasting away. But they have, in this country now, we think we probably have three million people with celiac disease. The majority have not been diagnosed. Yeah, it's like a one in yeah. 100. Yeah, one in 100. And right. they found, yeah. Total is like three million. Yeah, and, and only... Maybe 150,000 have been diagnosed so far. Yeah, most of them are yeah. diagnosed. Yeah. 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 And they can present at any age. Right. And it's right. highly genetic. Yes. Yeah, highly genetic. So uh, the author of one of these uh, books I have with me, and I'll review those with you shortly, uh, uh, doc, Dr. Baby, he went to Australia and he ran across a, a, a doctor uh, who had pictures uh, of about a hundred people he had cured of lupus, an autoimmune disease, mm -hmm. and pictures of them before and after. The, the, uh, the proof was there, and he done it strictly on reviewing the genetic history of the people. And he traced no blood tests, no stool mm -hmm. tests. He just traced the, the different illnesses genetic in the family, history. and that led to lupus. Uh, and and, and <coughs> very interesting, yeah, th that he did this, which sparked the interest, you know, of a lot of, of a lot of uh, 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 people. And and what happens is when you eat gl gluten with a lot of fo foods uh, in it, it causes the secretion of zonulin, Z O N U L E N, an enzyme, which flattens the villi. They become flat. Mm -hmm. So when when they do endoscopy, where they look with a little uh, tube and a little microscope uh, at the villi, they find uh, th that they've been flattened. They've lost their absorptive capacity. Because the trouble with that is you're no, no longer absorbing all the vitamins and minerals uh, that you need for life, uh, and it causes a lot of illnesses. Mm -hmm. So the celiac disease, we spoke about that. Then they found out such a thing called celiac sensitivity where you're sensitive to this type of food, but it doesn't occur every time 
that you eat the bread or the donut mm -hmm. or, or, or have a beer. It happens sometimes, other times not. So we have a huge population of people who are sensitive uh, to gluten. Isn't that interesting? And, it, and the majority is. of those, there's about 90 p million people like that, right. they do not know uh, that they have it. They have no idea. Yeah. yeah. So, Doc, uh, gluten, I think it's kind of like a glue which put together to this molecule in the carbohydrate in the bread. We yeah. use the gluten so that the bread get a little puffy yeah. and the food so it looks good. The gluten, if somebody is really sensitive to it, it's like a spectrum of disease. One side is celiac disease where yeah. the body will react severely, like Doc says, that you'll destroy those villi, yeah. so you'll have absorption problem, but it will also mount a allergic problem inside you, which can lead to arthritis, even ataxia reported, yeah. cerebral yeah. ataxia. Yeah. And a uh, lot of skin disease could be part of this whole process, whole celiac disease process. Uh, so it is not just the, the intestinal absorption, it's the body's uh, immunological re response. I think there are some uh, uh, line of thought that the plant wants to protect themselves so that the animal does eat it. Those proteins are there so that the, if animal wants to eat, it will cause trouble. So it's an evolutionary way of trying to get this plant protected. The by hybridization, that gluten is a big problem now because it's really not supposed to be human consumption. And so a good number of people are very sensitive to it. So one group of problem will be celiac disease, which yeah. is uh, one in yeah. 100, like Doc says. Yeah. There's another group is there may not be that bad reaction, but they all have they're sensitive. So that that condition will be like gluten sensitivity. Yeah, thanks for explaining that. And, and the diseases that are related to gluten sensitivity, it's about 150 of them. Yes. It can be schizophrenia, it can be de uh, yeah. dementia, it can be Parkinson's disease, uh, uh, MS type symptoms, right. severe ataxia is a class one, skin rashes, yes. uh, this hepatiformis skin rash, a very malignant rash that people can get. You can prove it by taking a, a biopsy of it. Uh, if you stop the gluten, it goes away. Yeah, you know, uh, I, an I gave an example of uh, my banker was mm -hmm. a lady, and she was telling me about her knee pain, her joint pains, mm -hmm. and and uh, and she just describing this to me. And I said, "Have you ever been gluten tested?" No. I said, "When do you get gluten tested?" Uh, and her family doctor refer her to a, a, a rheumatologist, and he started her on steroids. Ooh. Yeah, first thing was I run gluten tests. Yeah. So here is the yeah. point because a yeah. regular doctor will treat the symptom with some yeah. medicine, but here if that person is truly sensitive to carbohydrate or gluten, yeah. if you leave them off, a lot of this disease will be much, much better. Actually. A very nice explanation. What he's saying is a lot of diseases can, pre can be prevented or turned around by discovering the cause. Mm -hmm. Big point, big point. That's the reason for the show. Well, she had the steroids, and she developed, you won't believe the, uh, this, Dr. Ahmed, she developed uh, aseptic necrosis of both her hips. Oh, can you both her that? hips had to be replaced. So uh, she was gone for months, and she came back, and she's telling me the story. And I, then I said, well, did you get the gluten test I told you to get in the first place? You know what she said? No. And I was shocked. And I said, I just believe what you said. I went gluten-free, and, 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 and I'm fine. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, isn't that a knowledge uh, is power tells a story? Yes. The other thing too is this zinulin and the gluten foods also uh, destroy uh, where the lactase enzyme, the milk enzyme, mm -hmm. uh, uh, comes from. So people who have gluten problems also tend to have milk problems. Mm -hmm. So they suggest uh, people who have gluten sensitivity or. Uh, celiac disease where you definitely uh, not to drink milk. Mm -hmm. uh, very, uh, if you want to read about milk incidentally, read a book called Whitewash by Joe Keon, uh, a brutal book. You won't touch milk after that. Here, I, I read it. Read that. Mm -hmm. I've seen many Peter Churchons that have read that book. That is full of scientific references. Uh, uh, whitewash 
by Keon to give children milk after reading that, I, d- I doubt it that you will. But so gluten goes back, you know, many years, but mainly uh, since we, uh, we started uh, with agriculture 13, 15,000 years ago, and it was in the Middle East uh, and Europe, so uh, these diseases uh, were more common in European countries. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then they've, uh, and, now, and now the whole world, the whole world is involved uh, with it now. So, like in Australia, they'll check almost everyone, Italy, they'll check every, you know, European, mm-hmm. they'll check everyone as a ru- part of routine physical examination, uh, a, b- a laboratory testing, HR testing, they will check you for, uh, for gluten problems. In the United States, they check 6%. Yep, we rarely yeah, would check it's, it's not activity. done enough. Right. Because uh, I had a new neurologist, uh, a lady mm-hmm. enter our group, Mm-hmm. Uh, recently, I spoke to her because I was trying to convince the, the neurologist mm-hmm. to do regular testing for gluten mm-hmm. or the neurological disease. There's a huge association between neurological diseases and gluten problems. Mm-hmm. And I was working out at, uh, at uh, I think it was Planet Fitness, and she happened to be there. And she says, every neurologic patient, she says, she checks for gluten. It's it part of be. routine screening. Right. And I, I go like this to her because <laughs> it can cause seizures, schizophrenia, yeah. uh, de- dementia, uh, uh, all sorts of uh, uh, neurological uh, 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 symptoms. Uh, and a, a Dr. Charles Redding, uh, in, again in Australia, uh, accumulated uh, about a dozen patients uh, who had severe depression, and he stopped the, their gluten, and the depression cleared up. Isn't it neat? I mean, we see yeah. that anecdotally in our yeah. practice sometimes, and that is a reason behind it that probably was sensitive to gluten. Yeah. Um, so uh, th- this is a- another it. thing for yeah, that. Yeah, so keep an open mind here. Right. Uh, there are yeah. genetic tests for that also. Yeah. HLA and, uh, test. And, and, and the test uh, can be genetic, mm-hmm. HLA, two mm-hmm. or eight. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I'd start with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, if uh, your ne- genetic tests are negative, you don't have those enzymes, you're not going to have gluten disease. Uh, uh, those are very sensitive yeah. tests. Now, yeah. if you are do have uh, the, those, that doesn't mean you have it, but that means you could have it. Correct. That starts the rest of, of the testing. Uh, and so th- that would be genetic. Then you have antibody testing. testing which involves uh, Emma, H-E-A-A, uh, mm-hmm. for example. Uh, a rectal challenge is very effective, uh, uh, but a little complex, where they take a biopsy in your office, uh, and a and, uh, little messy, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's not too popular. But I, I see it as a company, uh, the Intera company, uh, if you call them, they, they send you the equipment, you put a little stool on that, you send it back, and within two weeks, you have a, that is the most accurate test there is. Wow. Yeah, mm-hmm. a, a true uh, uh, antibody antigen uh, test. Uh, uh, test. Uh, and uh, they can do endoscopy, that's considered the gold standard, uh, but there's slight risk, 1% risk. They can put a hole in your gut, and I met a patient like that, actually, who had to have a colostomy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's not riskless to get endoscopy where they look at the villi, take a biopsy, they look at that, uh, and then uh, if you go gluten-free, they, they recheck it a month or two later. The changes, incidentally, very quick. If you eat gluten-free foods, it'll change in a matter of weeks. Mm-hmm. Interesting. It's just like getting rid of diabetes. You eat right, it's quick. Uh, uh, but you have to confirm it then, and then that's the gold standard. But you wonder, is there any financial incentive here? I don't know, but right. you have to keep that in mind, mm-hmm. uh, especially if you can avoid something. It has even a uh, small risk. Doc, uh, if I can add here. So yeah. there are a group of people has something called irritable bowel syndrome. Mm-hmm. Uh, in our uh, physician group, there is a term for, we call it basket diagnosis means a patient has symptoms, but uh, we just don't find any reason for it. We do all sorts of testing, it all came back negative. Then we say, okay, you have irritable bowel syndrome. If somebody has it, I, I think uh, 
gluten test to be very important test to figure out if they are sensitive to uh, gluten because many of the people who are sensitive to gluten they will have those kind of symptoms and if physician does not advise them they will never know. I, I think thank you for bringing it up. Yeah, I, uh, irritable bowel which is very very common right. it, uh, uh, gluten problems uh, on the list. Yes. Gluten sensitivity. Right. Uh, so if they avoid certain foods uh, that clears up. Uh, a actually ulcerative colitis Mm -hmm. The same story where mm -hmm. things get more yes. uh, 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 severe. Uh, any, I think, personally, almost any can be acid reflux. Mm -hmm. Any bowel symptoms on a regular basis, get a gluten test because it, it could all uh, could be. Uh, clear up. Right. Could be, yeah, could be. Right. And uh, today, uh, about 50% of the patients who have gluten sensitivity or, or celiac disease actually, instead of wasting away, are obese. Mm -hmm. So uh, to me, uh, I don't know, how do you feel about that? Uh, to, I, I personally think from reading all these five books, which I'll hold up later, mm -hmm. I uh, 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 should be uh, screened for gluten problems. What do you think? Definitely. You're a specialist in the field. De definitely. I think. Uh, yeah gluten food that doc at the initially said those are the very common food in american diet right yeah. so we have bread we have pizza we have beer all yeah. this has all day long Bob has that so we are yeah. consuming it and and uh, we is also excess number of carbohydrate and people get insulin problem then lead to problem with uh, uh, diabetes and obesity. So these are all could be one piece of puzzle that sometimes you have to really look into that if somebody is truly sensitive to gluten and if you take that off uh, from the diet that may really help. Yeah and in evolutionary time mm -hmm. evolutionary changes take 10, 20, 30,000 years to change your gene structure. So when uh, 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 farming and agriculture isn't about 13, 15,000 years old. Our body has a time to adjust to these to different grains, and, yes. and, and the wheats are changing. You know, he has 12 chromosomes, now it's 24, and mm -hmm. now triticum getting up to almost 50, and mm -hmm. it's changing all the time. Our body is not, is not used to this. Incidentally, I was walking through the University of Minnesota campus one time for a national wellness conference, mm -hmm. and they had you know, uh, actually, in some walks they have pictures of people and stories. Mm -hmm. So I sit at the bench, have a cup of coffee, and I look at the pictures next to me. You know what it was? You will not believe it. It was a picture of Dr. Berlo <laughs> walking <laughs> through the fields in Mexico. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. I, I'm sure every people walking by had no idea who that was. <laughs> but I just have been reading about this. Wow. Uh, that's Dr. Berlo. <laughs> it shows him and another guy bending over, and he to was from the, the university. It, wow. Isn't that a. I mean, Hmm. It's almost like the spirit of the universe sent me there to see that picture, <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, it, it's something. Uh, it can't can't source incidentally yes. liver disease associated with us yep. also. Mm -hmm. And and as a one of my grandchildren actually uh, has celiac disease. Yeah. A, a test. She, yeah, she she a very short stature. Mm -hmm. She looks fine. Never really thought of this, but uh, when reading all this, I told my daughter, I said, get it checked. She has celiac disease. Wow. Yeah. And, and then, uh, then we have other uh, brothers and sisters who have a lot of canker sores. Guess mm. what? Many of them. Gluten sensitive. Mm. Yeah. They, they, they had testing done. Yeah, even abnormal liver test, you know, can lead to that. Right. Uh, and if, if so, ch a child has blood test sometimes we do routinely for hemoglobin which is a test for anemia and if somebody is anemic and uh, there are a lot of reason for anemia uh, and if we find out there is iron deficiency and if we don't find any specific reason yeah. the gluten sensitivity is one of the big one in differential diagnosis actually. Yeah this thank you for mentioning yeah anemia mm -hmm. severe anemia yes. can be associated just from uh, 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 gluten. A uh, Dr. Dickey, uh, this in, uh, uh, I think it was like uh, uh, 1985 mm -hmm. or so, he uh, truly dis described gluten sensitivity and, and, and the uh, uh, disease. Uh, and they now have called, called the MARSH test, M-A-R-S-H, mm -hmm. a series of tests to, to screen it. 
a uh, this can be a tough name here, okay? Uh, a Dr. M H A D Y V A S S I L O U. Okay. <laughs> he says fifty percent of neuro neuro neurological diseases are the gluten problems. Wow. Yet, I know a check. group of neurologists who don't routinely run the tests, except this one lady who came along. She checks everyone. Thank God. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> if, if, yeah, I don't think that's well known uh, because it, it, that is critical. I mean, right. that is uh, because you can get rid of the disease. Why give a pill? Or, and some of these illnesses, schizophrenia, dementia, depression, are serious. Amazing. You know, yeah. It is amazing, isn't mm -hmm. it amazing? And uh, uh, so we already mentioned that gene testing is the HLA right. antigen. That's a antigen on the surface of your Army, Navy, Air Force, your white cells uh, s sitting on there. Mm -hmm. uh, and the testing brings that out. Uh, you know, you put people on, on a proper way of eating with gluten sensitivity uh, and with celiac disease, the trouble is, usually about a 50% compliance rate. Yeah, it's a problem. If you have someone uh, who has celiac disease, they must be educated. They gotta read books. That's the reason I'm gonna uh, start putting up some books here. This is not just listening to, to this show. Mm -hmm. We're just getting you to the door. You gotta open it up and, and do some reading. This is a very complex matter. Uh, a, a good book is gl uh, Living Gluten-Free for Dummies by Dana Korn. Uh, I encourage you to read it. Very thorough, uh, understandable, uh, and because in this you must participate in your health care. Uh, it, it's a complex, uh, uh, not simple story. Right. But the foods that you can eat are more prevalent than the foods you can't eat. <laughs> so that's the good news. Right. That's the good news. Beer drinking may be out, okay. <laughs> Beer time may be out. <laughs> Fortunately, I don't drink it to begin with, and uh, so now, if I can say that that book, yeah, is not for people who is uh, gluten sensitive. I think it would be for anybody who has abdominal symptoms. It could yeah. be discomfort, bloated feeling, ache, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, constipation, and uh, somebody told that we have irritable bowel, uh, reflux, disease like Doc says they should read it because they may find some good story that they may try and get better. It doesn't necessarily for people who, uh, who is uh, uh, celiac disease because there's a group of people, they'll be gluten sensitive, they'll have all these symptoms that we are talking about. So it's really for everybody who has abdominal symptoms. I, I think that's excellent. Thank you for Isn't bringing it? this up. It's, yeah. it's true because what did we say? 90 million people have gluten sensitivity and we, uh, we don't know yeah. they got it. So, so uh, this is to, to read through this and say, boy, I need to get these blood tests done. And it yeah. explains the blood tests uh, in great, in great uh, uh, detail. Uh, so uh, you must participate in, in your uh, uh, health care. And, and what this really is all about, we've had an evolutionary mismatch. Uh, the foods we're eating have not uh, had enough time through uh, evolution that our body is able to adjust to it and they're rebelling to, to what we're putting down. Yep. I mean, it's a very is interesting story. Uh, and, and what's interesting too is that, uh, remember wheat is the biggest offender, okay? It can be, can be uh, 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 barley and, and triticum, and, and, uh, but uh, wheat is the biggest offender by, by a long shot. Mm -hmm. and, and, and if you get rid of your, and there's a lot of type two diabetes and, and actually type 1 diabetes also associated with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, certainly every child who has type 1 diabetes should have a gluten test. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, yeah. and because that may have uh, caused it, destroyed the pancreas. Uh, and and uh, I spoke to many pediatricians who are not aware of that. No. Yeah, no. and that is information needs, public health right. needs, to get, needs to get involved here. Uh, wheat also puts out what are called Exorphins, you know, endorphins are our own morphine that makes us feel good. Uh, but milk and wheat also put out some morphine type uh, substances that I'm in heaven. And, and that's why we, we eat one donut, we want to eat 
a whole bunch of them. And that's, it's not just the sugar, it's the exorphins, morphine type compounds. Incidentally, something I read recently, which is very interesting, they're also in milk. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. When, when that little baby puts his head down and, Mama, I love you. Actually, it, right. it's some of the exorcists, it's a morphine type compound they found now. Exactly. Color, I think one of these books mentioned. Total lactomorphine. Yeah. One of them mentions that if you yeah. start the gluten free life, first two weeks you're going to feel a little bad because you're going to have withdrawal from this morphine like stuff yeah, that you had many, many years. You read that story. Yes. Yeah, I read that story. <laughs> it's almost like withdrawing. Baby going to cry a lot. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> nature has designed our bodies very, yes. very, very um, uh, uh, well. The uh, HLA test we spoke about is DQ2, DQA, that's the name uh, of, of, the, uh, uh, of the gene uh, that they test for. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I got, there's like 22 feet of absorptive surface. The, the alveoli take these 22 feet of gut that we have uh, and and puts it all together because of these foldings. Uh, and, and the uh, gluten gets, gets rid of the absorptive surface. Mm. But if you uh, eat right, the repair process is quick. Yeah, right. matter, of, matter of a few uh, weeks or so. And uh, then we have something called atypical celiac disease, which we spoke about. You can have atypical symptoms, mm. hard to um, uh, di uh, diagnose. Uh, and, and some of us are just allergic to a certain amount of food, so it's, the spectrum starts. Uh, allergy uh, at one end and uh, uh, gluten diseases at the and gluten sensitivity and then celiac disease at the other end. So it's allergy, sensitivity, celiac disease. This is a complex uh, problem. And the symptoms uh, in the gut can be pain, distension, bloating, constipation, diarrhea, uh, stools that float with the fat in them. These all can be seen, uh, and, and, some, and, and, and many of these are, are non-GI symptoms. You can have celiac disease, gluten sensitivity, and have no symptoms in the gut. Yep. That's the thing that's confusing. That's, mean, yes. that's a, the reason I, I think, I personally think that this should be part of routine blood testing. HRE I testing think so, today. I think we've, uh, they're doing Italy, they do it in Australia. I think it'll be reluctant because the cost to the insurance companies, they may not improve it. <laughs> but, but we are the stage, at least if uh, you're listening, you, and, and, and I think I use it for routine screening. It should be because you can find the root cause of the, all these uh, symptoms that sometimes we just treat with the medicine. Uh, and if you find the root cause, you, you do the elimination diet. You can get rid of it. Yeah. You know? You don't need uh, all those. And, 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 and in children, you know, it can be colic and fussy mm -hmm. eating and crying all the time and bloating, a, a real type of stomach, diarrhea all the time. Uh, uh, not growing well. Not, not growing mm -hmm. well, being a big one, like I mentioned, this mm -hmm. grandchild of mine, uh, very short. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and then, uh, if they do make a diagnosis, you got to read these books, and you, I'd suggest going to an educator, mm -hmm. and, 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 and really, and, and if they have celiac disease, you got to be 100%. Even one molecule can set off a major reaction. Yes, and that's uh, pretty and severe uh, and, uh, group of people. Yeah. And uh, the, the name of the, the stool company is entero, enterolab.com, where, where you send them the stool, and, 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 and they said that is the most accurate. And you can see because they are looking at the product. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They will, because yeah. every day we shed some cells. Incidentally, our cells in a gut are fully replaced about every three days. Yeah. It's amazing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, amazing. I mean, when you think we have this skin out here, the outside of our body, but in here, that's outside of our body too, our yeah. gut. Mm -hmm. You know, it is full of trillions of bacteria, viruses. <laughs> 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 and one of the biggest problems, of course, the ones with celiac disease or sensitivity is that they're not absorbing the vitamins, the minerals, and they have to, f so checking for deficiencies of B12 and B6, uh, iron, for mm -hmm. example, albumin, uh, uh, you can have deficiency 
Uh, so a genetic uh, testing can rule out about 99% of the uh, uh, disease, not 100, but, no. but, but uh, so that's a good place to start. Uh, and so the, the entero lab, I think I really uh, like that idea. Uh, and these diseases can present uh, at any age. Yeah, you, mm -hmm. you can have even celiac disease can present uh, as you get older. Yes. And what does it? Stress, marriage, surgery, car accident, divorce. Yeah. So it doesn't all start at birth. Uh, it can occur anywhere along the line. And, and, and I, I think especially, I think every type 2 diabetic, uh, 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 even type 1 diabetic, should, should have a, a, a gluten panel done. Definitely. Y y because yes. uh, that can help things a, a, a great deal. Mm -hmm. uh, and many, and, and wheat causes, a, because amylopectin A causes a, a huge rise in blood sugar and is more likely uh, that you uh, developed a, a, big, a big belly. Mm -hmm. And that has many complications in itself. For, for one thing, if you get a, a, a big belly, a matter of fact, uh, any abdominal obesity is worrisome. Uh, because uh, to me, if, if, if you have abdominal obesity, you get to prove to me you don't have type 2 diabetes. And the fat, you think it's under your skin, the problem is the fat is around your organs, around your momentum. It, it's, it, and that is the, the first thing to lose. And so when you're losing weight, it'll drop off your head and neck, and it heads for the uh, organs next. And that creates a metabolic soup, uh, uh, and it puts out cytokines and hormones and increased levels of estrogen, all of which uh, lead to poor health. No. So, and this, this is very active. Uh, uh, very a active in there. So abdominal fat uh, uh, is, uh, and then uh, also they found a connection uh, now, uh, which I mentioned before a little bit, uh, to the brain. So uh, a lot of, uh, for example, Dr. Perlmutter, who lives in Naples, Florida, I've met him, a very nice indi individual, uh, David Perlmutter, uh, Grain Brain, an excellent book to read, Grain Brain, how uh, gluten can aff affect the uh, uh, brain. And we, we spoke in our previous lectures I've given here uh, on Alzheimer's disease and dementia. Most dementia, Alzheimer's disease is related to diabetes. And a, a, a lot of diabetes is related to uh, uh, grain problems and, and insulin resistance. So most dementia can be avoided. I recommend that book too, uh, uh, to read uh, that uh, uh, problem with grains and sugar and insulin resistance can, can result in seizures and the memory and, 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 and strokes and uh, vascular disease, uh, insulin resistance, for example. And uh, the, uh, so gluten-free diet, a, a, a gluten-free uh, diet, you, you'll need to read some books on that to give you a, a table of the things that you want to avoid. Uh, uh, things you eat and, and can't eat, but you can eat more things than you, can, than you can't eat. And like I said, anything that has in wheat, barley, rye, uh, triticum, uh, and, uh, and what they have done now, they, selling foods, they'll say, you gotta read the labels, you gotta be a label reader. But some of the labels, uh, uh, foods may have, that they, they describe a patient in there who, who was diagnosed celiac disease a little later in life, and, and she got worse, not, and not better. So they kept on checking everything and everything she ate and everything didn't get better. Well, she was taking about nine different medications. Hmm. You know what they found? What? Gluten in the pills. Oh. Yeah, yeah. There, there's gluten in certain uh, medications. So you gotta check with a pharmacist this have gluten in it. Remember I mentioned if you just take a, a little bit, a, a little bit of wheat, mm -hmm. for example, because uh, it's, it, it's, it stabilizes uh, medicines. So they use uh, wheat gluten tri products in medicines quite a bit. Hmm. So that you have to check on medicines you take, is it gluten free? Yeah, they found out that was the problem. They, they, she changed and bango, 
things cleared up. Wonderful. And, uh, and, uh, and as Ray mentioned, oats uh, themselves don't have gluten in them, but the way they manufacture them, they get contaminated with, with, with gluten things. So it's a contaminant. And uh, it can be, it can be uh, gluten-free. A lot of people who follow then a gluten-free uh, uh, diet, they put so many gluten-free carbohydrates in them. Like I had a, someone sitting next to me this week in Chicago at a convention I went to, uh, and uh, she had a very serious weight problem. I was very concerned about it. And, and, and she was eating gluten-free, high-carbohydrate foods. So, and the industry mm -hmm. has done that to us. Yes. So, because so, they want to keep us addicts, food addicts, so they keep on eating. Right. This is very. Uh, this is a very important point because if you go to the grocery store, if it says gluten free, most probably uh, they have replaced uh, gluten with uh, more carbohydrate or sugar. And if somebody has insulin resistance, obesity, that food is, although gluten free, is going to be the same kind of harm <laughs> that gluten has it. So, uh, um, I think it will be better to eat healthy, real food instead of packaged food which is full of carbohydrate uh, in, that, uh, in that pursuit of finding gluten free. So, gluten free food is really the real food actually. Yeah. And, 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 that, and to eat uh, vegetables, yes. and fruit. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe have a smoothie every morning. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it, to have a smoothie every day, uh, I think it's a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can go to uh, cashmanhealth.com, live to be 100. I, I post a smoothie every week. And there are many other books, Quick Fix by Dr. Joe Furman has uh, smoothies uh, in there. Uh, and I used to think, because what a smoothie does, you know, you, you start with kale and spinach and frozen fruit, uh, uh, some nuts, some, some seeds, and, and, uh, and keep on adding things into it. It is it, it, that the uh, machines, uh, the Ninja machine, the Vitamix machine, for example, uh, is that they break up the cellular structure uh, of the, the vegetables you put, put mm -hmm. in there and release all the vitamins and the minerals uh, that your body uh, needs much higher than chewing it even yourself. Mm -hmm. So, for example, today I had my smoothie fix in the morning. I, don't, I won't get hungry till four or five in, in the evening. Mm -hmm. You know, I, you can add things to it, a little bit of fruit, a little oatmeal, whatever. Uh, uh, Mm -hmm. Unless you get a gluten problem, <laughs> 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 and uh, so uh, uh, a smoothie a day uh, will get you a long way. A good way just to, to uh, start, uh, that. Uh, start the day, uh, for example, and uh, like if you get say type two diabetes from from uh, from the from anything, uh, you'll get rid of it quickly. Qu your blood sugars will just dive mm -hmm. uh, if you. Uh, make 70, 80 percent vegetables, and there's a good start. So there are plenty of things for you to eat, but you can't be drinking beer or wheat products, mm -hmm. uh, and you're going to uh, remember what we said. Gluten sensitivity, you might get away with a glass of wine, but, but uh, other, uh, otherwise uh, uh, you won't. Here, here's another good book uh, to, to read, uh, Wheat Belly by William Davis. and. Uh, Right on top of the book, it says, lose the weight, L lose the wheat, lose the weight, and find your path back to health. Uh, ex excellent reading. Uh, and, 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 and what he's uh, saying is, if you eat a lot of wheat products, that's sugar, and that gets converted to triglycerides, and that causes insulin resistance. And, and insulin resistance, uh, if you're eating wheat products or sugary products, the insulin level goes up. Insulin is antibiotic. It makes you gain weight. The more insulin in your body, the more weight uh, you're going to gain. So if you eat a lot of wheat products, uh, good chance you're going to get a wheat belly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, and most of us are not in love with that. Uh, and remember what I said, if you get a, you get a, 
uh, some fat on your abdomen, uh, possibility uh, that high possibility that you get type 2 diabetes with an associate, what do we say, 70 illnesses? Or 70. 70, cool 70 condition, yes. 70 medical conditions uh, associated with type 2 diabetes, which we feel, what do you think, we can get rid of 90% of it? 90% of yes. 90? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, you can get rid of it. Yeah, so public health, when I read the newspaper the last few days, mm -hmm. they, they, they're looking for more money, more money. Uh, okay, maybe they need some more money. But, but uh, public health education, <laughs> a lot cheaper. Yes. Uh, and uh, uh, I think it could easily be done. We could get rid of most uh, illnesses through public education at the school level, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, for, for, for example. What, what do you think? How could we, when you can get rid of most diabetes and the 70 diseases, we can get rid of uh, a lot of the uh, uh, gluten problems. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we could redefine pain. For example, pain, maybe I feel we should have a new definition of it. When I find 80% of the pain people, uh, I don't know why they hurt and they should not be giving a prescription. Supposed to be all the things I talked about, we probably save a trillion bucks, wouldn't we? Yeah. And that's a matter of education. Uh, how can we educate? What, what do you think, Dr. Ahmed? How can we educate the public? We're obviously doing it, uh, but uh, it needs to be more than, than that. What, what is our public health department, which I think are probably the guys should be in charge, mm -hmm. or maybe the med school teaching the providers, okay? I think it's what could we do to change this culture? Okay, this, this is important. For the audience, this is coming from a doc, more than 40 years here, neurosurgeon yeah. or neurologist. Yeah. So yeah. think about it, that this, he had enough surgery he did. Why at that time he's sitting here and talking with you? Because I think he believes in it, and, and the, we're looking for some improvement in the whole status quo that we are doing, and the whole system is doing. We are, we are treating symptoms. We are not looking at the, uh, the root cause of the problem, and many times it's the lifestyle, diet, exercise, sleep. Uh, many, many factors are there that you can change and make things better. So this is coming from neurologist, and I am a regular family doctor, uh, a little bit obesity medicine experience that I had. Uh, how we change it, to me, it would look like it's like a domino effect. Why I say that? Well, see, if one patient comes through our program and get better, and that patient is start to teach their family members or friends, so it become spread pretty fast actually. Uh, I don't find that government level can do this. It has to be grassroots level that once everybody get activated and then it will kind of spread. Yeah, thank you for uh, uh, explaining that. I, I, I appreciate it because I'm l trying to look for answers and, and there's, there's no doubt the public gets it because I go to Starbucks or someplace or uh, uh, and, and invariably somebody walks up to me that saw the TV show or the radio, mm -hmm. listened to the radio show or read si a book, uh, and, and the, the word is spreading. But, but I, I agree, we need to, the next person needs to carry a story. And, and, and I have people bring in family members, mm -hmm. you know, and, and uh, I see people for free, incidentally. And, and so, uh, I so saw Dr. Ahmed at, at the Three Rivers Pharmacy up on North Anthony. You, you can call over there, ask for Sheila Walker, and she'll give you an appointment. Today, this morning, <laughs> I saw five people in there, wow. uh, and it was really fun. Uh, a, a couple, uh, both had diabetes, for example, mm -hmm. and they both had lost 22 pounds. Wow. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Then another lady uh, from Wausau, Indiana, uh, who who uh, had cured of a brain tumor at age 20. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I was doing this, and, and she was trying to get over her uh, uh, medical problem at this time, uh, and had, had uh, lost, I think, 41 pounds. Mm -hmm. and, and just on eating right, 
I don't recommend a diet, and I don't think you recommend no, the diet. It's, it's uh, just a lifestyle. Yeah, just it's a lifestyle, right, isn't it? Right. Yeah. And, and I think any time we are recommending something, the the individual who um, is coming to us, they need to understand why. So we have to explain to them that this is the way. If you do that may help you and the reasoning behind it. So I will give you an example if somebody has too much insulin and uh, we know that if we eat more carbohydrate uh, we make more insulin and that causes insulin resistance syndrome uh, which can lead to obesity, diabetes and a lot of cardiovascular disease, many many diseases. So once they learn the basic reasoning behind it, then if you say, okay, let's do a low carbohydrate diet and they have to understand why. Once they understand that, then they will take a step. We do not want to dictate anything. It has to come from them, I would say. Yeah, th thank you very much to mm -hmm. understand how to uh, motivate mm -hmm. someone. Uh, it, it's not simple because yeah. we like to stay with our old habits and nature and design in us a circuitry to make us feel good. Yes. Uh, for example, you know, I uh, I hug my cats this morning, for example, <laughs> or I hug the wife, and, and I feel good. Uh, but uh, life is stressful for a lot of people, right. uh, and and uh, some maybe use cigarettes, so some mm -hmm. use alcohol. Mm -hmm. What I see more of now, a lot of people uh, using marijuana, and I mm -hmm. see in the state, uh, July one, they. Uh, uh, I see CBD oil shops exploding all over the place, and I say to you, could it be the little bit of marijuana that's in there, 0.3 or 4% marijuana? I'm in heaven, uh, you know. And some people use uh, sugar, and 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 the uh, gluten grains are addictive. Remember, I spoke about the uh, donuts. Uh, recently, I saw a singer at a church. Mm -hmm. to see me about getting rid of his diabetes and he said well doc you know uh, I went to to a church the other day where he's going to sing during both services a beautiful voice he said and I saw those little donuts and I says I ate 10 of them and then I had a sugary drink and while I'm singing my song <laughs> <laughs> he passed out <laughs> I think I'm at, he had a glucose tolerance test uh. yeah I told him you had a glucose tolerance <laughs> test and now he's lost 25 pounds and is type 2 diabetes, bye-bye. Hmm. <laughs> it, it was that simple. That yeah, that happened to him. <laughs> could you resist those little donuts? I'm not sure I could. <laughs> so we, we have to watch that, you know, uh, uh, th that it happens. Another good book to read um, would be Dangerous Grains by James Braley. Uh, and Ron uh, Hogan here, uh, hold this up for you. Uh, uh, I, I want you to read these uh, books if you have these uh, symptoms a relative has uh, uh, and to learn more about this because this is fairly uh, 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 complex. So you must participate in, 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 uh, in your health care. Uh, and especially to get these screening tests done. Maybe your next doctor's visit, you need to say, you know, I want to be checked for uh, gluten sensitivity or uh, uh, I have these neurologic symptoms uh, and you never checked my gluten. You may need to lead uh, the way. Uh, and then if you had some of these books in your hand and say, well, it says here, yeah, they're more, more likely uh, uh, to do it. Uh, as a neurologist and a neurosurgeon, I saw a lot of people on my 44 years of neurosurgery mm -hmm. <laughs> that uh, coming to see me about a pain here and there uh, when in reality they were being consumed by their type 2 diabetes, mm -hmm. uh, generalized uh, uh, vascular disease, uh, and, and uh, I would uh, discover in some of them uh, that they, they did have a, a, a gluten problem for, for uh, uh, example, and then I find it out in my own, my, in my own uh, uh, family, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, I myself too. I've never been tested before, but I I used to get canker sores too, but I noticed now that I'm doing this instead of neurosurgery, they went away. So maybe that was stress. <laughs> 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 but with the history of my grandchild, maybe uh, you know I'll be uh, yeah. uh, 
going into it. You know, at the Cooper Farms where you work, uh, what percent of the people do you think have a uh, preventable or reversible uh, disease that you're seeing over there? We have about 67% people has metabolic syndrome, which is uh, 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 increased to waste, maybe a little bit uh, borderline sugar or high blood pressure or maybe um, uh, low HDL uh, or maybe a little high triglyceride. So if you have three of them, we call it uh, metabolic syndrome. So it's, it's about two out of three people has that and that condition can lead to diabetes, heart disease, many, many conditions and these are preventable condition, yes. Yeah, uh, to summarize a little bit, uh, what Dr. Amar is really saying is that 67 percent, mm -hmm. which about uh, national average, below at the national level yeah. is about what mm -hmm. it is, is that they they have metabolic syndrome that's before pre-diabetes, mm -hmm. where they have abnormal blood tests, maybe a bit of a pot belly, uh, and if they were di, and I'm sure you diagnose them early, and at least show them what they need to do. Right. Then we have pre-diabetes last 10, 15 years. So now we have 25 years go by uh, of, and, and some of these 70 illnesses we talked about can occur even pre-diabetes, can't mm -hmm. they? Yes. So a lot of this is, is preventable. So in, in summary, uh, I think these, all these illnesses are interrelated and they can be di diagnosed, they can be uh, uh, prevented, uh, they can be treated. Uh, but genetics play a huge part uh, much more so than uh, type 2 diabetes in general. It's the gene expression in type 2 diabetes on what you're eating, whether you're exercising or not. Uh, so uh, keep in mind, uh, neurologic symptoms, for example, uh, seizures, memory loss, dementia, skin rashes, thyroid disease, all can be from gluten problems. So, so if your doctor is not running the gluten test, uh, you mention it to them. If you won't do anything, start reading some of these books. Or you can find us on YouTube. Uh, have this show and other shows uh, on uh, uh, gluten. Or s see us at the pharmacy where we talk to you personally, half hour, an hour, whatever it takes, for free. So I s uh, see people like I, I did uh, uh, today. Uh, the last one I saw actually uh, had fibromyalgia and was asking about CBD oil which concerns me a little bit. Uh, uh, the whole story, I think, is uh, very uh, complex. Uh, and uh, uh, remember, uh, gluten sensitivity, 150 different illnesses, and I don't want to go through all those today, you get confused, can be related to that. So uh, to get some uh, proper uh, genetic or antibody testing, uh, remember the intro lab, the, re the rectal channels, and some need endoscopy where they look at the villi. I think you understand it now where we are coming from. Be open-minded, uh, gather some information, watch the other shows. We will uh, educate you. Uh, and, uh, and Dr. Amit, thank you for thank coming. You. No problem. And, uh, and uh, you uh, probably would see a number of these people uh, at the factory mm -hmm. who uh, have these uh, problems. Uh, and uh, this will be shown on public access, access 6 o'clock next Wednesday and the following Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And they'll probably show it one of our radio shows too. Uh, uh, we, do, we do this because we care about you. We love you. That's why we're both here today. It's a beautiful day outside. We could be doing other things, <laughs> but we care more about you. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.